Let's review the steps you must take to solve a set and drift problem. These are the more, most complicated problems. They have quite a few steps, but if you can nail these problems down, the rest of the stuff is easy. So, I start this way. We find a starting point. We started here. Let's start somewhere else. Let's start up here so I have more room. So we started here. This is our starting point. And then it says we actually ended up over here. This is where we actually ended up. But we set off on a, on a course of, and it gives you a course, and you have to correct that course, T, V, M, D, C. So it gives you a course in degrees P, S, C. You correct that course up to degrees true. And then you take that course and you plot it from the starting point out. And now the problem says, so you set off on this course. And after a certain amount of time at a certain speed, you actually ended up here. What happened? A current pushed you and we're going to solve for that current. So these are, this part is very important. You must get these three steps correct and accurate in order to solve the problem correctly. So find your starting point. Find your ending point where you actually ended up. Get the course in the problem, correct it up to true, plot the course. Now it's just a little bit of math. We need to do a D street. Distance, speed, and time. And it wants to know how far up this, this course we traveled. So we need a distance, right? And with our memory aid here, distance over speed and time, we know distance is equal to speed times time. So we need a speed. Speed is given in the problem. We need a time. The time is calculated because it gives us, at the start, it gave us a time, start time, and then it gave us an end time, which we can take the end time and subtract the start time from it to get the change in time. So this we calculate from the problem. So we calculate it from the problem. And remember, your start time and your end time is going to look like this. It's going to say, let's just write it out, the end time minus the start. Right? What's going to happen, you're going to get hours and minutes right hours and minutes in order to put it into this equation you need to divide minutes by 60 and you'll get portion of an hour right decimal hours so you take this hour and this decimal hour and this becomes your time it's funny that time can actually it ends it ends up that time is one of the more difficult parts of this course, keeping your units straight and knowing when to convert minutes to hours and how to do that. So now we have a speed, which was given in the problem, and a time, which we did end time, minus start time, equals this time in route, and then we converted the minutes into hours by dividing it by 60. Now we have a time which we can give our, get our distance, which is just speed times time. And now this distance is translated onto this line. So you take this distance and you go to your latitude scale and we get it on our dividers. We go down our line, that distance, and now we say this is a dead reckoning line, a DR line and this is your DR position. So we say, I say, I reckon I should have been here if I were going on this course at this speed for this amount of time, I reckon I should be here. But I actually ended up here. So what happened? A current acted on you. The current acted on you. And a current has what components? Set and drift. Set is equal to the degrees true. So the set of the current 
all we need to do is we go to the compass rows. Let's say it's up here. And again, there's the center. Here's the true north. So the set of this current, we line up our parallel rules. And I like to do this as a little shortcut and it helps make it accurate. You put your dividers on there, bump your parallel rules up, and now you're very accurate here and you have a distance measurement. You go over to the compass rows and remember, this is a confusing part, but if you get this right, you eliminate two of the possible answers. We reckon we should have been here. We got pushed to here. We drifted this direction. So you come to the center, you drifted this direction. So now you record these degrees true, degrees true, and this is your set in degrees true. The direction that you were pushed by the current. So you went from where you reckon towards where you actually, and that's the set of the current. And the drift is equal to a speed, right? Drift is equal to a speed. And we know from our memory aid, speed is equal to distance divided by time. So we need to get a distance divided by a time. And it turns out, remember when I did this trick? Well, when I did that trick, I got a distance. Come to the latitude scale measure that distance. So the distance will be measured. And the time is the same time we calculated because we started here. It took us a certain time to get to here. So it also took that same time for us to get pushed from where we reckon we should have been to where we actually ended up. This time is the same time as it took us to do this. So we use our time here and we put it here. And this is the one we calculated earlier. And we do this division and this gives us our drift. And then we check our answers for the set and drift. And keep in mind, when you do check your answers, the drift will usually be closer than your set. And there's a reason for this. The two, your set, points sometimes are very close. So any small, small error or, I mean, when you try to measure two dots that are this close, you can be on those dots and, and you got five, seven degrees right there. Whereas if you tried to measure these two dots, it's much more accurate. So when your dots are close together, where you reckon you should have been and where you actually ended up, let's say they're you're real close, your set can, can vary quite a bit. But your drift, which is this distance divided by this time, will be a bit closer. And once you get these problems down, you are good to go. This wraps up everything that we've done in chart navigation.